out in the bush, often it was a bit hard to make your own music. If you were lucky, you had a guitar and you could play it, but often there wasn't even that. So if you were desperate for your music, you had to improvise. One of the things they made was the bush banjo, which was pretty easy in something like an outback house. See, everybody in the outback has at least got wire, and that made the strings. I'll just show you what they did. First of all, you'd take a, a piece of ordinary thin wire, bend the end round, and twist it many times so that the twist couldn't come undone. You do it with your fingers, or if you really wanted to get a good one, use pliers. Then you'd uh, pull off a bit of wire, about enough that would stretch from fingertip to fingertip, and do the same thing at the other end. This is a bit too short, but you can see, bending it over there with a good bit of wire, twisting it round, would produce a loop at the other end. Well, I've done that here to save a bit of time, and that's the finished wire. You can see that it really is as long as fingertip to fingertip, or almost so, and if you look at those two ends together, you can see they're well and truly wound so that they can't slip when you put the tension on. The next was to put the string onto the banjo. And the banjo was really nothing more than a veranda post. This is how it all worked. You could take a nail and reaching up as high as you could go, put one of the loops over the nail and get a hammer. I had to go really tight to hold the tension. Then you go down to the other end, get another nail, pretty stout one so it couldn't bend, put it through the loop that you had already made, into the wood of the veranda post, sloping backwards down the string, and then by pushing it in the opposite direction and making sure the point didn't skid, you could tension that string, and while it was tensioned, biff that nail in two. Now that string is tight, but it's not really tight enough to play. You can hear it just makes a sort of dull noise. So to get a lot more tension on, you did this up at the top. You took another nail, slid it under the string as far as you could, put the point into the wood there, and then pulled the whole thing sideways. And that, displacing the string sideways, put a lot more tension on it. And you can hear that if I pull it now. It's got a note, but it's buzzing because it's vibrating against the wood. So you had to lift it off with a bridge. That was just another chip of wood. You'd slide it under the string there, bring it up to the top, and by turning it on its edge, you took the string away from the wood, where it wouldn't buzz, and you put a bit more tension, and I think you can hear that now. It's beginning to twang, but it's not very loud. And if you tried to play it, of course, you could shorten the string with your finger, just as you do on a double bass or a guitar, but again, it's very, very quiet. It wouldn't carry very far, because a real guitar, just like a fiddle or a bass or something like that, gets its volume from its sounding box. That's a big box of air. When you twang the string, it vibrates the air in the box, and that's where the sound comes from. You needed that on the bush banjo. Well, it's not very easy to build a sound box on a veranda post, but you could do this. Out in the bush, they had tobacco tins. This is a film tin, same sort of thing. By placing that on the string instead of your finger, you could shorten or lengthen it, changing the note, and pluck it with the other hand. And the sound box, the tin itself, reverberated. It sounded quite a lot louder. You listen. The only trouble then was to learn where to place it in order to get a tune. Now these days people aren't too keen on having you bashing nails into their veranda posts. So what you need to do is to make a portable bush banjo. And it's on exactly the same sort of principle. Here we are. Put it across your knees to play this one. You can see it's a bit of wood there. The string is strung between those two nails and it's tensioned out sideways with that one. Once again, the bridge poked underneath it and twisted to one side provides a really good tight string and it twangs. It goes dead with your finger, but with the tin, once again, providing the resonating box, you should be able to get some sort of decent sound. Here goes. And all you need to do then is to practice like mad in order to get a tune. <laughs> 